Hello and welcome back. I am that James guy, and today we're doing something different again. We are looking at sort of five ship designs that should help you in your naval game in Hearts of Iron. So without further ado, let's transition into the game. There we go. Hello and welcome. We are in Hearts of Iron 4. We've loaded in as Germany. They're probably the most not important nation necessarily when it comes to the navy because obviously Britain relies on it to hold the hordes at bay but they're the country that people struggle with most when it comes to building boats that you people don't really know this is a completely fresh game I've not touched a thing what we're gonna do I've got five ship designs that we're gonna talk about and number one and it's probably my favorite ship design is the all gun destroyer now this works best from 1940 onwards, but you can get a budget 1936 variant. So we will quickly just get ourselves some XP, there we go, and I can show off the design. So this is the starting destroyer that Germany gets, it's a fairly bog standard design, something lots of people will use, ASW, torpedoes, guns, AA, you know, a bit, bit of everything, bit of an all rounder. but. First things first, I'm going to upgrade that. If, you've, if you're forced to take something in a slot, just make sure it's the best of what you've got. And then we're just going to put in some guns. Now, the benefit of this is that it still has depth charges. Sure, it's only got a 1, not an 8, because it doesn't have the ASW. And you can also put sonar in it. Germany starts with sonar, so we will use that. But it will roll straight through other destroyers. And as you can see, once you get to the 1940 version, research on icon, click. Just going to do that just so that we can show things off better. We grab the 1940 hull, and presumably by that point, we'll have also grabbed dual purpose secondary batteries, which coincidentally is the most important naval technology. Just, yes, it's great. I love it. I love it lots. But yes, if we were to look at a 1940 destroyer, we've gained another hull. You whack in just dual purpose guns. Remember all those, you know, got a bit more light attack than it had before, but it's got a hell of a lot more AA. We'll whack in the third level of that as well. Uh, the rest of that is unchanged because obviously it's not been a really balanced design. You could change this just to a light battery too, if you so desire. But I personally think just whacking in a dual purpose gun is probably the better option. Now, for 2,300 production cost all round, you've got a cracking little destroyer that will roll through any other destroyers, any of the other nations sort of throw at you. So I'm just going to tweak my sound a teeny tiny teeny bit. There we go. So yeah, design number one, the all gun destroyer scales throughout the game, works really well, especially once you get the dual purpose main gun. And, yeah, you will find it is the best fleet screen going. So on to design number two, the light cruiser. So there's going to be one design for pretty much every category in my top five designs. But for the light cruiser, it's more of a variant. It's, it's what I like to call the fleet cruiser. So we'll use starting technology to lay out something similar to what I would normally do. Um, if I've got dual purpose, I would use dual purpose. But, you know what we will. Cruiser engine. Um, you could go sonar, or you could go radar. I prefer radar to sonar, but, I mean, I've got it, so I'll use it. Fire control. Fire controls are very, very important. People often forget about them. You want to be using the most up-to-date fire control you've got. And then we'll whack in light cruiser batteries in pretty much every single slot. Guns are important. They are very important. And this, I think you could build pretty much straight away from the start. Um, yeah, other than the fact it's got the dual purpose secondary. So you could build this from day one. And as you can see, it will roll through the destroyer spam that Britain has. Britain spams destroyers. They have tons of them. They're cheap to build. This will just steamroll straight through them. And it is a great screen for your fleet as well. If you want to, you can change some of these rapid-fire guns to dual-purpose main guns as well to bring up your AA score. 
and still retain the highlight attack and just completely roll through things. If we were to look at a later game version of that, we will take the 1940 variant. <clears throat> Whoops, that will come in handy later I suppose, with the 1940 armour. And let's say you've also upgraded your improved light battery as well, because it's 1940. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean light battery. Yes, I did mean light battery. Light medium battery or medium battery modules on. Yeah, we'll, we'll just grab both of those. Now let's say that we were looking at a 1940 variant of it. Well, we've gained some slots. We can, of course, put in light cruiser battery 3 now instead of 2, which is a big bonus, big, big bonus. Still got the AA. We still haven't put in the fire control or the radar. But remember, fire control and radar, very, very important. Um, dual purpose secondaries in the slots that take secondary batteries. Yep, there we go. 4D light attack. It's got 8 light piercing, which means it can pierce 1936 cruisers. And yeah, it's still got some AA as well. They're quick, they're speedy. And they're going to blow things out of the water, especially destroyer spam. And once you've got the radar as well, they will be great at visibility and spotting things. So, on to design number three. And this is what... This one is a great budget capital ship for smaller nations. Think Netherlands, think Portugal, think also Germany. And it's what I call the capital cruiser. So, we're going to do much the same dual purposes, so on and so forth, you put a medium battery in the slot that takes the main gun. This now classifies it as a heavy cruiser, gives it a huge health increase, and otherwise is pretty good. It's also suddenly given it heavy attack and heavy piercing as well. Now, with all the slots, we will grab one depth charge, because, and I will come back to that why, why, but it relies mostly on the, uh, uh, yeah, dual purpose secondary, it can take a secondary, it takes a secondary, and you are a main gun, so you can take a dual purpose main gun. So now it's got AA, so it can operate as a fleet AA cruiser. It's got heavy piercing and heavy attack, not a lot of it, but enough. It's got plenty of light attack as well, it's got a fair whack of HP, and it's pretty darn quick. The main benefit of taking that single ASW is... If you're using it as your capital ship, let's say you've got one of these, two of those fleet cruisers, and a couple of those gunboat destroyers, you don't have much submarine attack, you can't really kill submarines. But with that depth charge on this ship, submarines target escort ships first, before they target capital ships. Or screens, I should say, they target screens first. Having the depth charge on the, f on the heavy cruiser, means that it can kill the submarines, but they can't kill it until they get through your horde of gunboat destroyers, which are cheap, cheerful, you can spam them out, and they come inbuilt with one depth charge attack, so they, they will still hurt submarines. Remember, fire control's all important, and you can also grab sonar. You can use the radar on the light cruisers for spotting, and use the sonar on the heavy cruiser. Now, onto something that is probably a bit worthless for Germany to be brutally honest with you but is great for Portugal and is also especially good for the Netherlands is the battle barge carrier now this is also a great way for Germany to get carriers early on because you start with some really bad designs of your cruisers your heavy cruiser design at the start is absolutely atrocious so converted cruiser carrier design with dual purpose secondaries a radar AA carrier engine. You can actually put the cruiser engine on it, which I think is a better better deal, especially if you've been working on cruiser tech, and then you go into hangar spaces. You've got a 40 hangar aircraft carrier for only 7,800 industrial capacity, which is about the same price as one of those heavy cruisers we designed. Well, it's a bit more, but it's not much more. Given that the heavy cruiser and the light cruiser are pretty similar in price as well. Not a bad deal. So for seven destroyers, you can have one of those carriers. Compare that to a battleship, which is going to cost you easily 11,000 or 12,000 for a carrier. Much cheaper. You can refit as well. 
So if we, for example, grab the, and I will do a more in-depth video on refits and why they're very, very, very useful. If we grab the Deutschland and tell it to convert, it's 7,431, and you're getting a carrier for that, a 40-plane carrier. Now, given that the Deutschland class is absolutely atrociously bad, why not do it? And now, for the my last favourite ship design, it's what I call the Super Heavy Battle Cruiser. So, with this one, we are going to just pick up these armour X. And you know what? We, we're going to finally relent and discover what radar is up to the 1940 level. And, and also, remember I said that the improved fire controls are very important? They are. They are very, very important. They're probably one of the most important naval techs as well. But let's go and design ourselves a battle cruiser, which is another great ship design that is often overlooked. Put a heavy battery where it'll take one. Put dual purpose secondaries where it will take them. Uh, that's a heavy battery. That's a heavy battery. That's a heavy battery. That's anti-air. That's a fire control. They give such a nice bonus. And they're especially useful on your gunboat destroyers as well. Put the heavy engines in, more dual purpose secondaries. And then battle cruiser armor, which isn't as good as battleships. Armor, it gives you less armor for XR, but it is so much cheaper and it still gives you the HP boost. And actually it's only 10 less armor, so whatever, right? It's still got 30 armor, so it won't be pierced by um, the starting pre-dreadnought battleships that Britain has. It's got tons of heavy attack, tons of light attack. It is fast, it is mean, and the super heavy battle cruiser works very, very well indeed. It also has AA. What you can do is you can change some of these, more of these out and put in actual heavy batteries and basically all gun it up so it will just blow through things. But I prefer a slightly more balanced approach. This is a friend of mine's design and it does work wonders. So there you go. There you have it. Five ship designs that you need to know about in... Hearts of Iron 4, and they will certainly improve your naval game. We're just going to show off what this destroyer would look like once it's got the fire control system upgrade. As well, 5.1 light attack. We can also now actually change it so it's got the dual purpose main batteries. <clears throat> and that better light gun, 12.6. That engine 3, 2. You could change these up as well, give it slightly less AA. Because that, that gives it piercing then. But destroyers don't come with armor, so there's, is there any point? No, there is not. You, you actually actively want the dual purpose main battery. It has more light attack than the main battery. It just has less piercing. So you really do want it, the dual purpose battery. It's a game changer. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a good one, and I'll see you again next time. And if you did like this video, like it. If you want to see more of it, then subscribe to it. And if you want to see me play games live, then check me out on Twitch at forward slash that James guy. Thank you very much and have a good one.